How's it going everyone? John here. Welcome back to another Streamlabs OBS tutorial video. If you're new to the channel or new to the series, be sure to go ahead and take a look at the other content on the channel. And if you're enjoying that content, definitely go ahead and subscribe. You can also follow me on my other networks, which you can find in the video description below. So for today's video, we're going to be going over a bunch of different settings here on the Streamlabs OBS settings tab. So to get to that, you're going to click on this little gear. It's going to pop this window open and we're going to go all the way to advanced. Now, if you haven't had a chance to see the other videos of me kind of talking about these different settings, be sure to go ahead and take a look at those on the playlist as well. So for the advanced, you're going to be seeing something like this. Now, there's going to be different types of options here, and I'm going to try to get through them as quickly as I can. So for the first one is general, so process priority. You can have this set for idle, below normal, normal, above normal, and high. To my understanding, for something like this, is the higher you have this set, it takes your your computer will then know that this needs to be a priority for a program, and it might use more CPU power in order for it to have it at that high uh, pri priority, basically. So I just leave mine at normal. And you guys can kind of mess with that and see how you want to have it. Now, I don't mess with anything here when it comes to video. I don't really see a difference between it, even between partial range and full range. Um, I don't see any difference between 601, 709, or any of these guys. So if you know more about this, let everyone know inside the comment section below. I personally have tinkered with it. I don't really see much of a difference. I could just be blind to it. But if you guys know more about it, talk about it inside the comments. So for audio, I leave this at default. This is for the auto monitoring device. And you can also set this up to however you want it, just choosing whichever audio device you want to have it for, for when you're doing auto mon or audio monitoring. For recording, don't even worry about this. For the replay buffer, don't worry about it. And then for stream delay, if you are doing tournaments and stuff and you want to add an additional delay to your stream, you usually see this with a lot of pro streamers, you can enable it and then give it a certain additional duration that you would like it to be, and it's going to be in seconds. If you accidentally get disconnected from the stream or something or the, the Streamlabs itself just kind of crashes and then it tries to reconnect, that's what this is basically trying to do. So it will try to do a reconnecting for it and it will have a max of 20 retries. You can adjust this however you want it to be. And then that way you can try to reconnect everything back to the way it was. I don't mess with anything with the network. So don't even worry about this. And then for sources, you know, enabling the browser source hardware acceleration. I just leave it as it is. And then leaving the media files as it is. So I don't really change much on here at all. The only thing I ever really mess with is just going to be like general. So then moving on to something else, we're going to try to get through these as quickly as we can. So for the in-game overlay, it says that the in-game overlay is a new experimental feature that allows you to view the chat and events that overlaid on top of your game. This overlay may not work with certain games running in exclusive full screen mode. For best results, we recommend running your games in windowed full screen mode. So basically what this is, is you'll see this here where you can show the chat, you can show that, and then you can toggle these guys. So you'll be able to see the chat. Maybe you want to have events down here and then you can adjust the opacity. And I believe only you are going to see this. I don't think the I don't think your stream and everything is going to see this. This is very similar to how it looks whenever you are using the Streamlabs mobile. So this is pretty interesting. And then if you don't want to be able to move that stuff around, you should be able to just untoggle that and then you should be good for the positioning. Now for scene collections, scene collections allows you to export all of your scenes like this into one single file and you can store that file somewhere on your computer or on a flash drive that way if for some reason everything crashes or if you're taking it to another computer and everything like if you're going to an event for example and you want to use your own personal overlays and stuff you can then export it it's going to give you a file you put that file on the thumb drive bring it with you and then you can import it when you're ready to bring all that stuff back in 
And then same thing with importing the widget file in current scene. So you can do that too if you need to. For notifications, notifications are very self-explanatory. You can set this however high or low you want it to be. So that way, whenever frames are dropped, you will get a notification down here. It will let you know that you have X, Y, Z amount of frames dropped. And then same thing with the uh, lagging frames and if you have like a certain threshold for that. So you got skipped and you got dropped. So now for appearance. Appearance, you can have this in day mode, which is super bright. I'm not changing it to day mode. I do not like day mode, but it is super bright. I like night mode, so we keep that there. And then you can have it either be a single click on select groups or you can have a double click. I leave it on double click. Now, if you want to see the live doc chat, which is this guy right here, if I click on here, it's going to pop the chat out or you can choose to not have that option at all. So that's giving you that flexibility there to be able to see your chat on your Streamlabs. And then you can choose the text file size. You can use the better Twitch TV emotes for Twitch if you're streaming over on Twitch. And that is pretty much it. Now, face mask. Face mask is something that I could not seem to get to work. Not sure what exactly is going on. I mean, I enabled these things and everything like that, but I just couldn't seem to get it to work. Um, so I can't really give much detail on that right now. And then for the remote control here, it says you can control Streamlabs OBS from your phone. I scanned this and what it does is it brings you to the mobile store to where you can get the mobile version of Streamlabs and being able to stream directly on your on your phone and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. I do like it. But that is pretty much all the settings. So if you guys have any questions, if there's anything I missed, anything that you guys feel would be good for other people to know, please let everybody know inside the comment section below for the right video. So if you haven't seen the other videos, definitely go ahead and check out those videos as well. And if you guys have any questions, you can reach out to me on Discord. You can reach out to me when I'm streaming over on Twitch. You can talk to me in the comments, hit me up on Twitter. I'm always available. Uh, just give me a little bit of time to respond. But thank you guys so much for watching this. I will catch you guys in the next one and have fun streaming.